All right. Good afternoon. It's 105 and I'd like to call the uh, February 21st board meeting of the Louisiana Physical Therapy Board to order. Could you please call roll, please, Charlotte? Okay. Oday Laverne? Here. Katie Britton? Here. Raven Lyons? Present. Deandra Norsese? Here. Phil Page? Here. Here. Meredith Warner? Judith Halverson? Tyra Mitchell? Mr. Chairman, we do have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to take a point of personal privilege. Um, mm -hmm. It is my pleasure on behalf of the board to thank our outgoing chair, Ms. Judith Halverson, for her kind but firm and nudging skills to keep us on task. Uh, Judith, thank you for your service and for your leadership. Our organization is a better today for the work that you've done. And today I'm humbled by being elected to serve as chair of this organization. And I pledge to lead this organization with vision and mindfulness. My third point of personal pleasure would be to establish a uh, new protocol by opening our meeting with a prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. And if you would please join me and stand for a moment. <clears throat> Can you clear the notes? I ask that we have the strength as we come together as individuals from all walks of life and all parts of our state, as we come together to work as one board with unity for our mission is to protect the public's safety the public health, and the public welfare. Thank you. Charlotte, would you lead us in a pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And my final point of personal pleasure is to take this opportunity to thank our fearless leader, Ms. Charlotte Martin, for her 10 years of service to this board. Oh, okay. Charlotte, okay. we'd like to present you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my goodness. Yes. Thank you. Well, that's why everyone's in here. That's why everyone's in here. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much. When I first came to the board, I had in my mind <laughs> that you're, you're in past leaderships before Charlotte, that the person that was our executive director should be a physical therapist. I was never so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a physical therapist in Louisiana that wants Charlotte's job. <laughs> <laughs> Charlotte, we thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> now we'd like to, uh, before we approve the agenda, I would accept them. I would like to uh, entertain a motion to move number seven, consideration of consent orders, up to number five after consideration of a motion to stay. May I have a motion? To agenda. I have a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Any public comment? Okay. We have revised the agenda. Uh, now I want to assure the uh, want to assure everyone that has an opportunity is afforded to all persons who desire to make comments. If you are present and you wish to make a comment at this board meeting, please identify yourself and the group or organization or company you represent. Please note that this meeting is being held via Zoom, so therefore we are required by law to record this and and maintain the recording for two years. All right, next, I uh, need a, a motion to approve the minutes of the January 2024 meeting. So moved. Have a motion and second. 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 All those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstention? Any comment from the public? All right, next order on the agenda is the consideration of motion to stay the suspension in the matter of case number 2022-I-006. And... 2022-I-009, Cody LeBlanc, PT, license number 08870R. <clears throat> Larry? Yes, um, the motion to stay was filed on behalf of uh, Cody LeBlanc. Uh, it's my understanding that there's been discussion held today about an alternative uh, remedy and which may lead us to an amended order of, of this board. So I'd like to hear from uh, Mr. Raines as a prosecuting attorney first, and then Mr. Sutter following uh, that. 
Yes. Um, so I had a phone conversation with Mr. Suddeth as I was on my my way here. Um, of course, they they filed a motion to stay, and that was what was going to be considered today uh, by you all. But uh, in conversation with Mr. Suddeth, um, Mr. LeBlanc is proposing or giving us a proposal to resolve this case in total. Um, in the order that you all issued, which is signed by the chair on uh, the former chair on January 31st of 2024, it requires that all costs of the uh, proceeding and investigation on all of that would be provided to Mr. LeBlanc within 60 days through his counsel, and then he would have 10 days to pay the cost once notified of saying. Um, he has made a proposal whereby uh, if the board would be willing to allow him to pay the, whatever that amount is over his period of suspension, which is three years, then he will waive his uh, appeal rights in this case. Basically, he will accept the order of the board, except for that modification of the order. Um, and if, and what we're gonna propose, and I would, I, and, and again, I would recommend that the board accept this, okay? but. What we're going to do is rather than argue the motion to stay right now, um, we, we do ask the board consider his proposal. And we're going to turn it over to Mr. Suddeth in just a minute to confirm that that is indeed the uh, proposal for Mr. LeBlanc. Um, but would allow you guys to go into executive session with Mr. Rodell <laughs> and consider the proposal. And if that is a, an acceptable thing from the board, then we will. Um, Agree to it on the record, but then we will follow it up in writing uh, and with documentation to the board on that to that effect. Um, Mr. Suddeth, can you, uh, if you would, please confirm that that is the proposal that I represented to the board? Yeah, first of, yeah, all, first of all, thank you for allowing me to appear by Zoom. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. fine. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, good afternoon, board members. Uh, thanks for allowing me again this indulgence to appear uh, remotely. Uh, what Mr. Rain stated is correct. So in the interest of efficiency, I'm not going to argue the motion to stay right now. The motion to stay will just be um, tabled. You know, if, if the board rejects our proposal, once you go into executive session, uh, I'm not dismissing or waiving my motion to stay. I'm simply holding it in abeyance. If the board accepts our proposal, well, that that moots the need to argue the stay. If the board rejects our proposal, then we need to argue the motion to stay. So I, I won't discuss the stay right now. Uh, it's a little premature. Uh, the proposal from Mr. LeBlanc, um, as, as you all know, we filed this motion to stay and we intend or we intended to head to the 15th JDC and appeal the sports decision. Um, but the decision has already had substantial financial impact on Mr. LeBlanc and has uh, taking his ability away to earn an income. And so he wants to try and comply with this board's decision, but um, we've already received uh, notices from health insurance companies that have taken away uh, his ability to bill. And so at this point, financially speaking, uh, it's been devastating. And so he wants to try to comply and he wants to try to pay, but whatever that number is, and we have no idea what that number is going to be, uh, but whatever that number is going to be in terms of the cost, the fees, and the fines, as Mr. LeBlanc works to try to get his life um, you know, back on his feet and, and make income, we are requesting, or he is requesting, and I am requesting on his behalf, time to pay, uh, the ability to pay over the course of the three years of his suspension, whatever that number is. Um, and if the board accepts that you know, proposal, then we would at that point, dismiss our motion to stay, and then we would waive any appeal of the board's decision and we would adopt it, you know, um, in full, with the exception of that modification, the modification being he can pay whatever that number is that we'll receive, pay it over the course of the three years of his suspension, and in whatever, you know, terms or payment plan is agreeable to the board, the board may want, you know, a certain amount per month that's paid towards that number, you know, there can be, I think, a workable payment plan put in place, but the first question is whether or not the board's even open to the idea idea of a payment plan, period. The board may say no and may want everything paid in 10 days. Um, but that is our request and our proposal of the board. Thank you. Thank you, James. And um, again, I said this once, but I'll say it again. It is my recommendation based on the situation to accept that um, proposal of Mitchell Law to uh, completely finish this case, if you will. 
this seems like a, a reasonable uh, request and response. I think we should go into the board should go into executive session to discuss it and make sure that the board is comfortable with what's what's been proposed. I will entertain a motion to uh, go into executive session to discuss this matter. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, vote by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. The ayes have it. Will not be in the executive session. We will move everyone in Zoom to the waiting room until executive session is, um, until we're back in open session. Okay, thank you. Probably about the scooper and the license in the lobby, so I'm going to just back in up here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Um, and, uh, I think it'll start and know when you're ready to go to the Did y'all vote to come out of executive session? We're, 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 we're about to. to. We just want to make sure. Are we good? Good. good. And are we good? You can unmute it. Okay. What? And it's every, I don't think we're muted, but everybody's in the waiting room. You just need to oh, we take everybody out of the waiting room. Just start over each one, over the names. And if you can unmute all. Mm -hmm. well, okay. Yeah. You can unmute all. Did that work? Doesn't look like it. You need the attorney in there for sure. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to exit the executive session. So moved. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor of exiting executive session, vote by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We're now out of executive session. Um, I'd be uh, entertain a motion. Yep. So. Captain Britton, board member, uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the proposal provided to the board by Mr. Suddeth. Further, the board authorizes Larry Rodell to prepare an amended order that reflects the proposal accepted by the board, and the amended order will be circulated to the appropriate parties um, by the close of the day tomorrow, February 22nd. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, James. We appreciate Wait, it. No, uh, Mr. Suggs, before you go. Second, the motion. No, we have to. Oh, yeah. Did we lose him? No, I'm, I'm still here. I didn't. Excuse me, just a second. We have a motion. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. We have a second by Raven. All right. Uh, so, discussion? I was just going to say, Mr. Suggs, uh, it's the will of the board that the uh, the payment plan, if you will, be one third, one third, one third at the end of year one, year two, and end of year three. Okay. So the draft that I will send to you, Mr. Raines, and to Charlotte Martin tomorrow by the close of business will reflect that. And then as soon as um, council, all council, bless the document, we'll have it signed by the chairman. I, I appreciate that, Ms. Rodell. Just for my uh, understanding, I'll use a, a round number here so I can do some math real quick. Let's say the number is 3,000 and the board says, okay, we want a thousand per year, basically pay, right? One third, one third, so a thousand per year. Again, I know it's not 3,000, I'm just using that number for, for math, uh, ease of math. Does the board have a preference on how that thousand is paid monthly or is the request just, look, get to a thousand by the end of the year? You know, if you cut that check on 1231, that's fine, but get to a thousand at the end of the year. Right. Yes, yeah, get to a thousand by the end of the year. Gotcha. Okay, so there's no request of specifics per month. Just pay the, the one. Calendar month. year or the end of the year of his probation. I'm. What was that, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I'm asking of the group. Is it at the end of the calendar year or is it at the end of each anniversary of, of probation. his probation? Yes, correct. It'll be the. The anniversary of his probation. of his suspension. The suspension. end of the first year of his probation. Suspension. 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 Excuse me. All right. It has nothing to do with calendar year. Okay. So the anniversary date is the suspension date. Gotcha. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, I'm sorry. 
One more point, just to be clear, we will have additional charges tacked on each year based on monitoring visits. So there's no flat fee after today. It continues, right? No, those are paid at the time of the monitoring visit, though. Okay. Separate. Gotcha. Thank you. So that was Phil Page. Phil Page, yeah. Just, yeah. So James is clear that's for probation. You're not doing that during suspension. Though. There's no monitoring in his window during suspension. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. So, is there a monitoring fee during suspension? We're double checking. We're, we're double checking. It's like what Charlotte it's just probation. said. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's only during probation. Oh, okay, okay. Which, if I recall correctly, it was two years of probation after suspension. I think was the. Uh, That's was correct. the. Okay, so those monitoring fees that that wouldn't kick in until after the three years. Okay. That's right. Okay. Um, Question to the board for clarification. Mm -hmm. So there are no monitoring fees. Can monitoring occur during suspension? Yeah. Right. Yeah. He should not be practiced. Right. We need to be sure that he's not practicing. How do we assure the board that he is not practicing without monitoring and suspension? So supervision. Just for a point of clarification, the monitoring um, of somebody who's suspended doesn't typically result in somebody receiving a fee mm -hmm. because even though we can monitor that they're not practicing, the monitoring during the probation is to make sure that the things during their practice are being carried out as should be and have been corrected. And so that's more intensive and there's a fee associated yes. with that. Mm -hmm. All right. So I want to be sure that there may be monitoring during suspension. There will be no charge. Understood. During during that period of time. Okay. Um, well, I think if I recall correctly, the, the board did vote to to approve the proposal. So with that, just the record's clear, uh, Mr. Raines, I'm going to go ahead and formally uh, withdraw my motion to stay uh, from consideration, given that the board has voted to approve the proposal. So that can be taken off the docket for you guys. Thank you. We have not voted yet. Yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second in discussion. Any any comments from the audience in Zoom? Any comments from the public? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. The motion is approved with the unanimous vote. Well, and so now... Uh, I guess uh, I can log out now and... and uh... Yes, sir. I'll, next next point is I will officially remove from the agenda oh. the, the consideration of your motion to stay as you have withdrawn that. Okay, yes. Okay, great. Thank you, sir. And you represented your client very well. Thank you all. Thank you, board members. Thanks, Mr. Raines. Appreciate you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is to um, consider consent orders in the matter of case number 2023-I-018, uh, Ashley Phillips, license number 07848, and case number 2023-I-60, uh, Donna Redmond, license number uh, A7007. And Donna is with us today. Yeah. All right, so we will hear Donna's first. Sure. Okay. Can we have a, a moment to review? Um, I just want to make it okay. clear that I have looked at the other um, person that this had happened with that the order came from. I was never intentionally practicing without a license. Like I, if I had known I, I didn't have my license and it was a compliance. I would have never practiced. I know how serious that is. I know it doesn't change the fact that I was, um, but I am willing to do absolutely anything I need to do to get back to work. My goal was to just get back to work as soon as possible um, for financial reasons and for my coworkers, my patients. Um, I was asking about um, Miss Redmond. They haven't. They haven't been alerted of what's going on yet, so they're they're not aware. Oh, okay. So it might be better for um the presentation of the consent order to occur, so they know the story, and then we'll give you the opportunity to 
present whatever you'd like if that's okay. 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 Jim, if you would. So it said you all have the order in front of you, I believe. Okay. So this is again, it's an order 2023-I-06 use the, the matter number. Um Ms. Redmond is a PTA. She's had her license since 2006. Um, in 2000, as you all are aware, 2019, 2020, we went through COVID. And um, since we had a case recently on the same type of issue where we, we sent a lot of notices out regarding the requirements for uh, licensure and renewal and all of those things during that time period. And we've laid out all the different notices that went out at number two of the factual basis. Um, in number three, you'll see that on May 31 of 2020, we sent uh, responding to Ms. Redmond an expiration notice uh, advising that sort of a failure to remove, renew that notice. Um, of course, and if you practice without having renewed, then you can take the disciplinary action. Then on December 20 of 2023, the board office was notified uh, by Ms. Redmond that she failed to renew her license in 2020. So she did and you've heard her talk about it, but she's been practicing with an expired license since uh, that time, so since 2020. Um, so what what we have proposed as an order is is basically the exact same thing as the one that we just did recently is the send this consent order. Um, and I'll walk through that with you. If you go down to the second page, number one, uh, her license will be on probation for two pure, two years on reinstatement of the license. Um, she's got to submit to the board in, in writing not less than 30 calendar days prior to completion of the probary, probationary period request uh, to come off of or close out that probationary period. Number two is she must fulfill the requirements of Rule 187 regarding reinstatement of her lapsed license and complete 60 total hours of board approved continuing education which includes four hours of jurisprudence, four hours of ethics, and the remaining in clinical and administrative practices. Of those 60 hours, 15 shall be from live coursework, and you can't duplicate those. Um, number three, she will be, uh, during that probationary period, she will be required to participate in random unannounced monitoring visits. She's got to provide, number four, a copy of the order to all of those that she works with. Uh, number five, during the probation period, she shall complete an additional eight hours of board proof, continuing ed coursework and professionalism per renewal period. Uh, number six is just the standard kind of requirements for um, all the hours that she has to work. Number seven is she's got to pay $450 in reimbursement costs. And the remainder of the requirements are kind of our standard. Uh, language requirements for board orders. Any questions or comments from the board at this time? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, heard uh, you can address the board now if you like, please. I work for Cabrini Pediatric Therapy Center where I had been practicing. Um, I know it says we have to reverse all the charges um, that were put in under me. Am I able to start working again and can have like three, six months or however many months to um to show that the reverse the charges have been reversed? So I have to get the letters and then I know they've already been working on that. Um, 
my boss at Cabrini, they've already been going through and taking all their charges off and reversing them. I just, I guess I'll have to get a letter. Am I going to have to get a letter from them stating, showing that all the charges have been reversed? Is that one of the things I'll have to get before I can start working or can I start working again before that? Well, no, but you, you do have to comply with everything that's under Rule 187. Um, so you have to complete the reinstatement process before you can start working again. Right. 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 Yeah. yeah. So one of the requirements is to revert to the board. Yeah. You know, I'm not pulling up the rule right now. So. Okay, but one rule 187C, uh, reinstatement pursuant to this section shall also require that applicant or the employer, even birth, or the charges are taken away. The place of treatment there during the series for which the applicant did not have current evaluation. So, Charles, maybe you can answer this, but what is the typical evidence or proof that someone provides to the board when, they, uh, when this is taking place? Um, we've seen letters um from the employer reaching out to the insurance company saying i want to make you aware that license number so and so was not effective on these dates making them aware and then the insurance company um will remedy last in their way and sometimes we see letters coming back from the insurance companies verifying that they received that um that's typically what we see Right. So I guess her, her question is Can I start working again? Once that everything's been reinstated, right. can I start working and, again? And part of the process of reinstatement is to provide this information that your employer has begun or has done the process of so, typically, reinstatement. Typically, um, in our, typically, whenever we have individuals who don't renew their license, it's within a shorter amount of time. And um, in their order, it'll say you have until December 31st to show us evidence that you have reimbursed or, re or reversed the charges. That's what we typically say. Um, the rule reads a little different than that. And we're reading, we're rereading it now and realizing that. But that's what those, they're, they're called like um, the consent orders that we put forth for people who come forward and say, I want to get back to work right away. The board authorized me to sign those to get people to back to work really quickly whenever they just were like, oops, I was supposed to renew the other day or something went wrong technologically. There's an order with a fee and, um, you know, some sort of penalties. And that's one of them. But with the ones that are... Um, this one doesn't have that in there to, to re reimburse it by the end of the year. It just says comply with Rule 187 specifically. So I think to answer the, your question, you'll work with the board office mm -hmm. submitting your reinstatement application and like going through this checklist yeah. of 187 yeah. and they'll help me help you walk you through that process okay my um my other concern <clears throat> question uh, about possibly modifying was for the continuing ed it says i need to um complete 60 hours of continuing ed but 15 of those have to be live on site courses is there any way that can be changed to like the live webinars? I, I've been looking to try to see when I can go to these on-site courses and there's just so few now, like there's such a decrease in the amount of on-site courses that, I mean, it could possibly take months before I can get 15 of the 15 hours or even do 60 hours um, of even online 60 hours, 60 hours of courses, and then, I don't know, an extra 10 hours of EVs on top of that. I mean, anything that can be where we can modify the own site. Okay. Courses. That was my only other question. We, we negotiated this and we signed. I was not aware if you were going to ask for modifications today, so that's why. 
and I've heard this before. So the, I'm hearing the same kind of you are. Um, ordinarily, we and I'm saying that because ordinarily we negotiate this stuff before you sign it. Right. right. <clears throat> and I signed it and I looked at everything, but it was when I started trying to schedule these CEUs, these live CEUs, that I was like, okay, this may, this story is over and being able to get back to work as soon as possible. Okay. Is it written uh, anywhere? <laughs> because of the time period that 15 need to be live? No, it's written in the order, okay. but nowhere else in the. You mean just do this one first and then do the other one? Yeah, that's fine. We can go in and out of the executive session twice. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> A motion going to get to the second one. She could. Are you done. finished? Are you done with your? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now she could request that this be discussed in public and not go into executive session. Is that yes. correct? All right. So you could have our. You could request that our discussion be open and in public, or we have the privilege to go into executive session. It's your. It's your choice. Um. When is the executive session? We'll right now. This moment. We'll do it right now. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, do I have a motion to go into executive session for this matter? So moved. I have a motion and I have a second. Thank you, Raven. Yes. All right. All those in favor of going into executive session, vote with saying aye. Aye. All opposed, say. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We'll now go into executive session. Could you move the audience into the waiting room, please? And could you go to the waiting room? Those who are on Zoom, I'll be moving into the waiting room. Okay. Um, Louisiana APTA. Or APTA Louisiana rather has a court, uh, their state meeting coming up in just a, in a in a few weeks, and you can pick up all of your live courses at that time. Okay, so we're in agreement that the consent order. You still agree to the consent order as proposed now? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, without any further discussion, all those in favor of the consent order as presented and accepted, please vote by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. In abstentions, the ayes have it. The consent order is approved. Uh, next would be the matter of consent order 2023-I-018, Ashley Phillips. We have it. Oh, can we have that consent order, please? I think she wanted to get the right. I've got one, but I think y'all got to come from do you want to oh you want to give your opening remarks and I'll um yeah. I'll just give you a little bit of background on this one. This is uh in case number 2023 I 018. It's in the matter of Ashley Phillips. Um we received a self-report <laughs> from Ms. Phillips advising that on May 23rd of last year, she was convicted of DWI from an arrest and a charge on August 8th of 2021. Um, the arrest was not reported to the board at the time of the arrest or when she renewed her license. On May 25th of so the next day, the board sent her a notice letter advising her of an investigation into the self-report. We requested a written statement from her. She provided that um, in, in June. As part of the investigation into the complaint, we sent subpoenas for treatment records to five treatment facilities at which she received treatment for substance abuse issues. Um, the treatment records indicated a history of admission into facilities, discharge from the program, and then an immediate relapse. Um, this cycle occurred nine times between November of 2021 and August of 2023. Uh, and then her treatment notes also indicated that she was arrested for aggravated assault. Um, ultimately, that was uh, not prosecuted by the district attorney's office. Yeah, the treatment facilities for what? Alcohol? Uh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, our further investigation indicated she was arrested on September 22 of 2022 for aggravated assault in Fort Bend County, Texas. Um, that was not reported to the board at the time of her arrest or when she revoked her license. So we have a couple of charges there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and she has, because of our 
concerns for her and, and her ability to practice what we proposed and what she accepted. And she is represented by an attorney in Baton Rouge. Um, her license is suspended until such time that she submits to a fit for duty evaluation. Uh, she has scheduled that at her own expense with a board approved provider. And that evaluation report will be sent directly to the board upon completion. Um, her license will remain suspended until receipt of an evaluation report stating that she is safe to return to the practice of physical therapy with reasonable skill and safety for the partner. Um, two, respondent agrees to follow all treatment recommendations resulting from this evaluation. Uh, if individual treatment or therapy is recommended, um, then the individual treatment provider must meet the criteria for individual treatment providers. She will sign all necessary releases to allow us to get the evaluation report, the duty evaluation report, any evaluation discharge summaries, all of that, so that we will be fully apprised of, of what, what is going on with her treatment status. And uh, those will be provided to us on a quarterly basis. Once we receive that report saying that she is safe to practice, this is obviously no guarantee that the report would be able to say that, but once we have one that says that she is safe to practice, Number three, your license will be reinstated after a suspension period set forth above. Then she will be on a probation period for a minimum of five years. Um, it's kind of standard language there regarding getting off of probation. Uh, she will participate in the RPTP program uh, during her probationary period. And suspension period. Yes. Well, she's suspended from the practice and she's got to, she's going to be doing, um, Yes, well, she's got to do the fit for duty, and then she's going to do whatever that person tells her to do. Yeah. So number four says during the suspension and probationary period, she'll participate in the RPTP. Oh, yeah, I just missed a word. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just not, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Just blind a little bit. <laughs> um, monitoring visits, I'm just standard language for that at number five. Um, number six, standard language regarding providing the order to everybody that she works with. Um, seven. Once she's back and working during that probationary period, she's got to work a certain number of hours, and it's listed there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, during the five-year probationary period, she may not work in a home health setting. Uh, number nine, she's got to pay $1,150 and cost for reimbursement of the call. So during the first year of five years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Number eight, Number eight. During the yeah. first year of the five year probationary period. Yes, yeah. Not in the yeah. entire time. Correct. Right. One year. Okay. First year of the five year period. She may not work in the home All right. Number nine, um, reimbursement of $1,150. The rest of it is kind of all standard language for that. Okay. For the same time, like the board and all that. Any questions about? So I see in number one, generally when we order fitness for duty examination, we put a time period on, like you do it in the first 30 days. But here, if, if my understanding is she is suspended, until which time she gets that examination and completes the treatment. If she chooses not to go get the examination, she's just suspended. She's just suspended. And participating in <laughs> RPTP. Right. Mm -hmm. She's done. <clears throat> It, the order creates certain things that she has to accomplish to get back to the practice. Mm -hmm. And so it, it puts some responsibility sure. in her lap, okay. if you would. We need a doctor. Executive second early point. <laughs> Is there a request to go into executive session? No need. Phil, you have anything you want to add? <laughs> no, I'm good. If y'all are good. Yeah, I'm good. Um, I'll make a motion, motion to accept the consent order as proposed. Second. I have a second. We have a motion and a second on the floor to approve the consent order <clears throat> as presented. All those in favor vote by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. The abstention. Guys have it unanimously. The order is approved as presented. All righty. 
Um, we can move next to uh, officer's report. As chairman, I have no report. Secretary Treasurer report. Do we have some <clears throat> We We need this. Thank you. All right. So typically, um, at the beginning of the calendar year, um, I present to you guys some details on the budget and planning for the next fiscal year. Um, Charlotte and I spoke at length about that presentation today, and we decided to postpone that presentation because there are some pretty significant dollar unknowns specific to rent and the building situation. So most of you guys have got some updates about that in our weekly reports. And so we don't want to approve in a budget, the budget um, and have to amend it. And so we have until June to approve the budget for our next fiscal year. And so we're just gonna postpone that a couple meetings um, until we have more data to present to you guys best, best picture that we can. Any questions about that? Okay, so what I do, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> what we do have up here is um, just a quarterly update. So we'll go through our quarterly update right now. So again, this is our current fiscal year. Um, and as a reminder for um, new board members, our year runs June to July, as opposed to January to December. So we're halfway through, a little more than halfway through. First column is actual, second column is budgeted. Change and the, um, the visual, I can't see that on Zoom. Oh. I'll just see the PowerPoint. Can you see the uh, fiscal year budget versus actual? No, I just see a PowerPoint. Oh. That's what you should see. Does it look blank? No, it has the the PowerPoint slide from Cody LeBlanc. Oh. oh. It says I'm viewing Jessica Allwell's screen. Okay, that's did your talk. You're not sharing the right. One sec, Phil will get it fixed. Bill, can you let me know if you can see that, please? I see it now. Thank you. Okay, great. Perfect. All right. So again, this is. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> We're fixing everything all at once. <laughs> People to touch That's fine. That's all we need to be able to see. You're good okay. with that, Katie? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. So actual budgeted income expenses and net income and as always, we are conservative, right, with our um, expectations. Um, actual versus budgeted, our actual income is slightly higher than budgeted. Um, and as a reminder, um, our income, um, when you're looking at the July to June fiscal year, we see the biggest changes in February, March, and April because of renewals. So everything is on target um, as expected. Um, and our actual expense is lower than budgeted. Um, in the third column, you'll see the annual budget um, as well. And so no concerns, no need for changes, everything's as expected. Okay, so that's a quarterly update. And then the next slide, I think it was just a reminder about our CDs and such. Um, so this is just a reminder, we've already talked about this, um, where we moved, you know, our different dollar amounts to. So checking and savings is substantially lower than it typically is, but it was because we, um, at a recent board meeting, decided to move funds into our other um, money market accounts in order to take advantage of the current rates <laughs> as we are anticipating having to spend those dollar amounts on um, real estate. Um, activities. So next is just an update about the anticipate anticipated renewal income. Um, first line is the number eligible to renew. Typical um, and uh, non-renewal percentage is 8%. Um, and then if we look at the bottom, we'll see our 2024 renewal income estimate um, compared to our budgeted 
renewal income and you'll see we're really, really close. Um, and so again, no concerns about our expectations for what we budgeted for last year. Okay. And um, is this yours? Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Quarterly update. Good. Is that for me? Okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Next report would be the executive director's report. Charter. Thank you, Oday. Um, so as of February 16th, since our last board meeting, we've licensed 30 individuals of those 24 were PTs and six were PTAs. Oh. You can see the breakdown there. Next slide. Um, for our compact privileges, we have had um, year to date 30 individuals who have entered Louisiana to operate on a compact. Um, and so we that does not include the, um, so whenever we have renewals, those are people who are already here, okay? For our complaint summary, we have currently 22 investigations open. The violations are broken down that way. Um, three are on people who aren't licensed by our board, meaning that they're either advertising physical therapy or performing physical therapy. Since December, we've received seven complaints. Um, we have had one motion that y'all discussed today that it was tabled, um, three proposed consent orders, um, two of those you heard today. We closed 17 cases with 14 letters of concern. We had um, three board orders, and right now we have 25 um, open investigations if you include the unlicensed individual. Okay, done, thank you. All right, next is the Practice Act Committee. <clears throat> I'll give that report. Uh, each of you have um, obtained uh, up-to-date emails of activities. I will attempt to do that as every time we have a meeting or something official happens or changes, I will notify each of you, all of us as a group. And so there's been uh, no change or activity since then, other than today, uh, we in, in following up with uh, Chief Counsel Nick Gotchasan, he told us to check back with him after Mardi Gras. Uh, we checked back with him, hoping to get a report for today. And uh, we have a meeting, uh, a Zoom meeting scheduled with him for next Tuesday morning at 930. And so after that meeting, I will give us give everyone an update. All right, no further activity. It's all like, never mind. I was going to ask you, is this is the appropriate time to discuss uh, the response from the medical society. Sure. Okay. If you would mention that, please. Sure. So one of the practice act changes was to remove special interest groups from nominating board members to our board. So I was able to get in contact with the Louisiana State Medical Society and um, they said that they have a board meeting in March, so they can't tell us one way or the other. And then quickly thereafter, they responded and said, you'll have a nominee within 30 days from the Medical Society to replace Meredith Warner. So, because originally they were saying that they didn't have anyone who was interested. Um, and I said, okay, well, would you be interested in removing the nomination? So um, they can't tell me one way or the other until their board meeting in March. And I said, I look forward to hearing, just to give you guys information. Yeah. <clears throat> And then the Louisiana Hospital Association said that they would not support removing their nominee. But do they have a nominee currently? Yes, they sent they their do. nominations in to the governor. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. So that's just information for you guys. They, you know, just to let you know, special interest groups so far don't sound like they're really supporting that change. We don't know if they're going to oppose it. They're just not, they're not in support of. So we'll, we'll try to find out. If there's opposition, then we'll need to make a decision. Do we pull it before they show up to oppose it? <clears throat> Do we let them oppose it? And then we look like great guys and we 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 we'll make some concessions. That'll that'll be just tactics later. Okay. okay. All right, next website committee. Phil. If go ahead. You'd like me to give the update, Phil? Yeah, please. <laughs> Okay, so we had um, an FBI audit because we review criminal background checks. This is standard. Every two years, we have an FBI audit. We successfully went through that. We had two things that they requested. One thing is that 
We have a privacy statement that's posted on our website and available to all applicants. They want us to track people who confirm that they read it. So now we had to add to our application process. I, you know, they took the jurisprudence. They completed the application and now they have to click on the privacy statement and acknowledge it in order for us to say, yes, they have acknowledged it. Website company already went in, made that change. So we're good with the audit. Um, then also I wanted to update you guys that FSVPT has their grant program for jurisdictions. We did receive a grant, as you all will recall, to participate in the API, which is to push the information, we were doing manual reports to them through the compact. Now it's push reports, which is much better um, and more timely. In addition to that, we now have compact privileges showing up on our website. So you can verify anybody who's working in Louisiana, which is something we all wanted. Now, the next thing is that um, we're working with them to put the minimum data set survey into our application. So you don't have to have a code that you enter in and go to a different website and come back. It's all going to be integrated. Um, and that's FSBPT funds that are going there. And then the final thing is an API push log. So this API push, whenever we send the information through, we didn't have anything logging whenever it occurred. Nothing that you guys will see, but it's just something that's going to be helpful for us to audit and also to respond to inquiries if there are any. <clears throat> and then the next thing on our website um, priority is expense forms. So that's going to be a feature that's on your dashboards where you'll be able to manage your expense forms, kind of like Concur, but it's going to be built into our system for our board members and advisory committee members. Any questions? Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, update on real estate, Charlotte. <laughs> so at this time, um, we are still not in receipt of a red line document lease. We were expecting to be in receipt of it last week. Um, I have been told that pressure is on the individuals who have the document to send it to us um, as soon as possible, hoping to get it this week. Um, and so as soon as we have that, we know exactly what we'll be working with with the state. Um, in Jim's office, Eric Landry, who specializes in commercial real estate leases, is on standby and has been extremely available to us. Um, to have conversations so far. And so as soon as we get it, we plan on jumping on a call with Division of Administration, with the state, Eric, and the potential landlord to talk about what is possible to get this thing yeah. signed. <clears throat> and the subject matter that's holding everybody up is asbestos. So the state says that the landlord has to remediate or give a report. And the landlord said, we're not doing that. You know, it's crazy, right? Every building has asbestos. So there's a process for us to hire um, an investigator, an inspector rather, to come in and do that and state the condition of, <clears throat> basically what it'll say is, yes, it's asbestos, it's currently non-friable, it's protected, and this construction will not affect that. Let's move forward. Hopefully that's how easily it could be resolved, but it's going to take time, it's going to take Hire an expert to get them to come in, get a report, and make everybody happy. That's part of the cost of the construction, though. So yes. it's not going to be an extra check that we write. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions about that? Any comments? Uh, the questions on real estate. All right. Uh, Phil, if you would, uh, the investigative committee. Um, Do you want me to start it please, off, Phil? Please, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, um, so the investigative committee discussed the process of dismissals, and we have this new process in place, effective January, um, to have the investigations run through the investigative committee, which Chris Franks is here today, um, Phil Page is here today, and then Marie Morgan is also on right. that committee. And, and so for anybody visiting on Zoom, could you explain the change that has just been made in the investigative committee process, please, if you would? Uh, you just announced to folks, but tell them, tell them what we're doing. Sure. So prior to 2024, we had a different board member assigned to each investigation. And so now we have an investigative committee that meets monthly and is presented um, cases that are to a point where they've been investigated and a decision needs to be made. So whenever that committee meets, it's the, the three individuals I just mentioned, Phil Page is the board member, Chris Franks and Marie Morgan are advisory committee members. Jim Raines, Stephanie, and I, and then an investigator are there to talk about the cases and where they are and say, okay, we think that 
there's mm -hmm. nothing else here, or, you know, we think that this should be disciplined. Would he, you know, this is our recommendation. And then the committee considers it. Um, the, the, the dismissal topic came up and we brought this up at a previous board meeting to say, oh, there should be some parameters where it comes to the board meeting, because it was such a unanimous decision and a strong opinion that it should be dismissed that it was like, do we even really need to waste the time of the board? And so at the next meeting, which was in February, dismissals came up again. And it was brought to our attention that, you know, you and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jim works with several licensing boards. And he said, you know, either you have delegate, you delegate the authority to the staff to do the investigation and you bring it to the board, or you delegate the authority to a discipline committee who makes those sort of decisions. It's kind of because the opinion is it's so obvious to dismiss it. So we talked about like, well, when would it be appropriate to bring dismissals to the board? And the idea was, well, whenever there's kind of like a split vote, maybe, then maybe you bring in like the chair to come in and weigh on it or something like that. But whenever it's such a unanimous, strong opinion, is that really just redundant? Whenever you have three physical therapists looking at something, all saying, this doesn't, you know, there's nothing here. Right. So, so, so I, I like to address this issue because I was one of the proponents uh, mm -hmm. of bringing the subject matter up is I, I was very concerned that as an individual, the only individual on an investigation as a board member that I might choose to dismiss or someone else may choose to dismiss. And the rest of the board would say, well, are you crazy? Well, why are you dismissing this? This needs to be brought forward. And so just putting the burden of dismissal on one individual therapist, one individual board member, I thought was a little, a little concerning. Now that we've changed that concept and we have three therapists, one board member, two on the committee, be PTs or PTAs, I don't think that needs we that needs to be an issue. I, I think in my position, um, that's no longer an issue of, of having that sole burden to dismiss on one person. <clears throat> and so I'm I'm comfortable that if this group decides that they want to dismiss, that it doesn't need to be brought before the board for approval. Sounds good to me. So also we have some cases that could be dismissed right now that are being held up and we're not sending out dismissal letters because we want to make sure that you all agree that that should be the process um, where, um, and in rule it does say that the investigative committee dismisses cases, but we just wanted to make sure because the conversation has been like, well, what's the best practice with dismissals? How should we handle these? So it does also extend the, the time frame for cases whenever we delay it like this. But so it's just in your hands, like y'all feedback. Thoughts? So I have a question. So you said that you, you all have a few cases that are on hold right now, a few dismissals. Why are they on hold? Because we didn't want to send dismissal letters out if mm -hmm. the process that you all want is for us to bring them before you first. Oh, okay. And so you already decided that, like, the decision is already made as far as what you wanted to do with them. You have it. The recommendation out. has been made, so right. not necessarily a decision. It's yet. unanimous, yeah. but it should be dismissed. Okay. And also, Jim, uh, we were talking about what we can present to the board in terms of this, these dismissals, and it was going to be pretty vague. Mm -hmm. So, which we've done in the past, whenever we tried to bring them before the board and we're kind of like case number such and such is related to whatever. And then y'all can't really ask questions anyway. So um, <laughs> we thought we'd bring the topic back up again. Do you, you want to add anything, Jim? Well, the reason we do that is uh, and generally be vague about dismissals is if somebody disagreed about it and we had to get into the details of it, then you're all recused off the, the hearing. If, it, if we don't dismiss it, and it goes forward and as a case, when you have a hearing, then none of y'all, because you're not supposed to have information about the case right. before the hearing takes place. Yeah. So, so okay, that's, so that's yeah. why you're kind of insulated from that process. And Charles, right, your rule specifically says, when it's, uh, a complaint may be dismissed for the following reasons, when it is the decision of the investigative committee to dismiss a complaint, the complainant shall be provided with a letter of explanation for dismissal of the complaint. So that's the way it would in rule draft it is that, that how, how it would take place. It's a little more difficult when you just have one PT right. by themselves on cases. <laughs> but now when you have a committee like this, to me, you know, let the committee do their work. Yeah, my, my, yeah. my concerns are now, to me, point, now that we have three people, 
I mean, uh, Katie, I, one, one of the issues was uh, I've been given a, a dry needle case. I'm, I'm, dry ne I'm the dry needle expert on the board, so I, I got to sign that case. And during just casual conversation, it came up that there was a, a, a pneumothorax in Lake Charles from dry needling. And you said, oh, anybody causing a pneumothorax, they, they need discipline. Well, I just had a case that had a pneumothorax and I dismissed it. I said, holy moly. OK, what do we do now? <laughs> All right. Because mm -hmm. we, we put a lot of effort into it and, and it wasn't someone that was reckless. This person probably was the most qualified person in the state to do dry needling published articles, um, taught courses, was instructor, and, and things happen, mm -hmm. okay? And so we dismissed it with, you know, the little guy on my shoulder saying, well, Kate is coming, okay? Kate is going to get <laughs> after you. So I want to be sure that none of us got put in that position of making a decision alone that might be contrary to what the rest of the board felt or any board member felt. Now that there's three people, I have no concerns. Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Um, I just want to say I love the process. I really enjoy being part of that committee. And I think that we all, I agree with O'Day that, you know, I, I remember the discussions of having one person make the decision. We do, uh, with the three of us, talk quite a bit. And Jim's there. And it, it's just a really good process. And I, I want to thank Charlotte and Stephanie and, every, and everyone for um, putting this together because I think it's going to be a really great way to streamline this whole process. Good. It's good to hear. <clears throat> Anything else? No, oh, or about the investigative committee? Nope. No, and th I think, look, this is a, once again, this is a very forward-looking change in the way we do things. And I think it's going to be meaningful and expedite all of our time and all of our energy and make things happen quicker. Because mm -hmm. one of our biggest concerns is that we have so many open cases and they're there for so long. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to coordinate seven people scheduled to have a conversation about a case, now it's, it's saying three people all the time. And, and they have it. They know what their job is. And they have a, a, a set monthly meeting. Uh, I think it's a great forward-looking opportunity here. So I would just say, so I'm not opposed, but this has definitely been something I had been opposed to from the beginning of six years. So it's a hard shift in my head. Um, <clears throat> but I would just say that like, so yes, there's three people, but those three people don't represent all skill sets and knowledge base, right? Like, and so I would say if there's any even inkling of a doubt of a question even if you need a little bit more of an investigative component, pull in somebody with that knowledge base and expertise, because that's the point is that the board member is supposed to have the expertise. And so if any case comes up that there is any doubt of having the expertise on the investigative committee, and you guys are amazing people, I'm not saying but you can't know everything, mm -hmm. right? And so I would say make sure because it, it's easy to miss something in an investigation, especially now that the investigators have the skill set of being an investigator, but they're not a therapist, right? And then the other only other thing that I say is think through if it's a controversial topic, right? It doesn't mean that you can't bring it to the board to consider a dismissal, right? Even if it's not the standard practice. So like the, the example that comes in my head, it's not your example, but it's another pneumothorax example, and it was a malpractice situation where the therapist was found guilty of malpractice from their malpractice insurer for causing a pneumothorax. That information gets sent to the board and it got dismissed. And that's when I was like, whoa, like, I don't feel comfortable with that dismissal just because it's malpractice. You know what I mean? And not, and it's somebody else and that's another like branch. So like anything that could remotely be controversial or cause and come into question, I would say bring it to the board would be my on record statement. Well, about that. In our particular case that we were discussing, there was not a complaint filed, mm -hmm. but there was a malpractice mm -hmm. because the person he caused the pneumothorax on was a close friend of the family. And in order for his insurance to pay for her hospitalization, she filed a malpractice claim. The insurance paid for her hospitalization. Mm -hmm. And she that patient didn't file a complaint with the board. Mm -hmm. Where not that we 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 get the reports from the National Data Bank, we'd have never known about it because there was not a complaint to the board. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, point well taken, and and uh, my sensitivity is the same as yours. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I wouldn't worry about. It. I agree with you, Katie. We always would have that in the back of our heads if there's any doubt. You know, <clears throat> I think that we've had some pretty simple cut and dry cases so far. Um, yeah. That that'll help take up, you know, not take up a lot of the board's time. But every one of us has that feeling that if we if we have any doubt, we will reach out. And I also want yeah. to make another point is that there's also another PT or PTA that's on the advisory board that starts the case before it gets to us. So you really have four eyes on this. Uh -huh. Yeah. And just to clarify, too, the only reason I'm saying that, too, is like, I know you, I know, Chris, I know, Marie, like, I know everybody and like, I trust the what you guys bring to the table, but we're talking about creating systems that will continue beyond right. us right. and so i just so saying that for the staff and attorneys etc that um those are those would be my concerns for the future mm -hmm. if we change this process that way so okay. okay any further discussion on the investigative committee any questions to any of the committee reports if not we'll move to the uh, final uh subject on the agenda uh, public comments are there any comments from the public? So you can see everybody's face. Any comments from the public? Anybody on Zoom wish to comment? If, if not, do we put you on? She's just trying to make it so you can see everybody okay. who's on Zoom. <clears throat> we right. If there are no public comments, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. I don't think it's like Christina might be. Pretty Christina, good. you there? You still the only one left? You like to say anything? Oh, I was just going to say thank you guys. No, I'm good. The chat was disabled, but I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? All opposed? Right. Adjourn. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. See ya. Yeah. Thank you. Oh goody! Oh, they need the gavel. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Okay. We'll find it. Um, no, so you can, you can stop the recording. Ready. I was going to wait for him to get through the. Um, okay. What's that? It was that. Thank you, Phil, so much again. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. See you guys. Bye bye. See you in Lafayette. Yes, indeed. Do we have a need anybody to work it? Yes. Yeah. I never wait. No so, um, we have the we'll have the governor's reports from 2023 printed and we'll have practice acts.